treat for you tonight. This will be our first cocktail table video with the, the better camera. And this is a 1979 game plan. One of the few game plans that came out. You know, they didn't make many machines. And uh, this was designed by Ed Chebula. He did most of the cocktail tables. It's hard to believe he designed most of these because he started out the game plan. He did a lot of the game plan games. His final game design, in fact, was Data East's The Who Tommy. That was his last machine. But he did Jurassic Park, too. He did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for Data East. Did a lot of stuff. He didn't have a whole lot to work with because the game plan computer was the typical late 70s design. Um, this is the cocktail table that pinball shape that you're familiar with because a very similar machine was produced by Gottlieb when they made the, um, the two cocktails for the make money while you sleep folks. Night moves and Caribbean cruise. Now, they made 12 of these. Not all of them were released. I think there were two that were never released. They had artwork done or such, but this enjoyed uh, a healthy amount of games made. We're not sure how many, but we know that the last cocktail table made was Lady Sharpshooter based on uh, the original Sharpshooter game. 1984, and they made 1,200 of them. There was also another one they never made, Baby Sharpshooter. That never came out. But uh, anyway, we want to go over a few things because, see, Bruce and I have been working uh, hard on the circuit board so you could see what's going on uh, and, and what we did with these. Uh, first, we discovered that the game plan computer and lamp driver does not like LEDs, does not like them. And we tried non-ghosting, we tried uh, uh, ghosting ones, we, we tried different ones, it just doesn't like it. So what we did is we lit with 44 bulbs, the computer controlled lights, but then we put some condoms on them, color condoms four different colors. But we were able to put some LEDs, we lit the holes, the, um, the rollovers, these are brand new, two slow changer color changers, a fast changer here. We even put a fire LED up here for that star. Okay, and then we have two blue LEDs in the pop bumpers. Um, the game came out very nice, uh, has factory mylar squares in front of the kicker here, and over here, here, and then around the two pop bumpers. We, we are guessing this had virtually no play. Cocktail tables didn't get any play. They just didn't. The rules and the scores are on a piece of paper there, and almost impossible to change, so we left them alone. We figured that's a good, healthy one. Now look, we did add a light here, a strip, uh, the, all the LEDs are from Comet Pinball that are on the surface. And we also put the washers to protect the plastics. None of the plastics were broken, and they never will break in the, in the use. We had to change all the posts. The posts were all falling apart and shattered. So we have clear posts here, so they help the colors, or the clear of the um, LEDs, to uh, shine through, make it a little bit brighter. Now, do you know what innovative thing the game plan did? It's right here in front of you. See these? These right here, Bruce, trickle down and show us the LEDs. These are LEDs displays. Okay? They are not high voltage displays. And we happen to have filmed this clip when this cover was off. These are the LED displays. Now you'll notice the first digit here is a zero. So this never had to change. It never changes numbers, it always stays zero. So that was one less chip they needed to have these go cycle through the numbers. It's all low voltage, Bruce. There's no shock hazard whatsoever. Ah! I got it in, Bruce. But you'll edit it out. 
I know. Okay, we'll put this back together. Let's get back to the video. Okay. Okay, pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Okay, now, there's a key back here you turn. It lifts this up, and this lifts off like that. You set this down. This is the only clumsy part of the game, but it had to be done. Now, playfield lifts up very easily, like so. And we have a prop arm here that inserts here, so it's literally impossible for the playfield to hit you in the head. Isn't it, Bruce? It's just like a jukebox. Yes, just like a jukity box. Now look, we did put right here an LED, so you'll be able to, um, um, uh, the coin slot, but we have this set up for free. I wanted to show you a few features on this game, which, uh, the, the circuit board system um, from underneath. And cleverly, we worked on these, Bruce, didn't we? Bruce mm -hmm. worked on them, and I did uh, as we went. So let's start. Um, let's start with a transformer here. See, it's bolted in and held in by three screws on the top, and there's two on the bottom, a nut and bolt, and that lifts out. Okay, look, the lamp driver board. That's next. We removed that, and then here's what we discovered there. Okay, look. The LDU one, the lamp driver unit one. Now we know, Bruce, this is revision one. Look, these are all the different lamp transistors. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, and that would have been eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a total of 48 computer controlled light bulbs. That wouldn't have been another. Where the Bally one had 64. So the Bally one had more. You'll notice each one of these would drive, let's see, uh, I guess um, each one would drive about uh, well, how many 16 are of them. Yeah, there's four, three here. See? Yeah, 16. So, see? So there's only three here, so we're driving one last group. A much, much smaller board. But you don't need more than 48 computer control bulbs in any pinball machine. Well, we did notice, Bruce, how nice and neat and how super clean underneath. They must have used a heavier grade a solder because the Bally ones require resoldering. These are like still pretty much perfect. We're going to go through it anyway. But uh, there we are. So that's the lamp driver board. Let's see the next board. Now we'll move on to the driver board. I'm going to move shift sides here. This is the solenoid driver board here. Right here. And they use the same board and the lamp board on many of their games. Ah, look! The solenoid driver unit. Compact, easy to carry, not much to it. The Bally one's a lot bigger. Now, of course, the Bally one does have the high voltage for the uh, uh, displays, and it also has the 5 volt regulator for the logic board. Wait a minute. That's right. It doesn't need high voltage because Game Plan was the first company to put LED displays in their game. And they never went bad. Isn't that something? The game plan started it. They had the L uh, right idea with the LEDs. Get rid of this whole section, all that nonsense, all that voltage. Everybody else did high voltage, but game plan didn't. And their displays are still running 40 years later. Let's look at this little guy. SDU Solenoid Driver Unit Dash 1. Revision 1. Revision 1. And over here is the little game plan logo. See GP, and it's been approved, it's been tested. Nice clean board. Now this one does have cold solder joints on it. Yes, the, the bigger pins apparently 
developed in. Now, this had, see now look, everybody says it's missing a part. So it's actually not. It never used this one. Um, this might have been for another possible use. Maybe another set of different flippers. I don't know. I don't recall ever seeing any game, a game plan release with that. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. And now we'll flow some solder on there. Make sure they're all connections are good. Uh, the game does not use anywhere near all these uh, transistors. Just like the Bally games did. Right there. But, uh, let's get it back in, Bruce. Okay, then. Ta-da! Yes, you've been waiting, you've been waiting. Here is the logic board. Now, this logic board had something very unique about it that we did not have on any other game plan that we ever had gotten in. Let's watch that footage. Well, I want you to see something. Because you'll probably never see this again. This is the logic board. Clean as a whistle, okay? Uh, game plans logic board. These are the spaces for the three ROMs. Uh, two fifty one hundred ones. But look, see the battery hasn't leaked. And look, uh, October of nineteen seventy nine. Can you believe it? A one of a kind, super rarity, an unleaking battery. And that's something. It doesn't have any memory anymore, so it doesn't have, doesn't remember high scores, but baby, this thing never leaked. What's so remarkable about that? And that's something. The cells inside, okay, let me cut this open. Have not shown any sign of leakage. See what it is basically is this ca case contains three one and a half volt cells tied together. Now that one did. So we have some leakage on the middle one. That board is very very lucky very, very lucky, wasn't it? Yes, it was. This is a prime candidate for luck. Frank's battery board. And I believe, Bruce, that it will almost fit. <clears throat> Won't quite fit, Bruce. I think we're going to have to move one of the pins. <coughs> yes, we're going to have to move this pin down to this opening. So it looks like a game plan battery holder will in fact solder in fine into his board. Shall we do it? Okay. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? A super clean board, as nice as can be. Now, it doesn't use this connector, see? But this one here is the display connector. That fits so nice and tight. You have to make sure that's in tighter. Your displays will go out. Okay, and there's this connector here is also not used. Uh, we figure in other games are using these here, the full-size pinball machines. So not everything is used because there's a lot less on this. Oh, wait a minute. We forgot a board, Bruce. The sound board. This is the sound board from the Star Trek. Now I want you to see something here. The power comes in on this connector, so this gets one voltage coming in. This is the speaker going out, it just uses two wires. So two wires coming in for power, two wires going out. And there's four different sound uh, exports here. Probably three in a ground, from what I can see here. And this here, I'm going to clean the legs off. Do you see how they're black? That they're tarnished the silver so I'm going to wipe them clean so they're going to hopefully be okay we will turn this up this is one of those fiberglass erasers that you can buy right there on Amazon 
Okay, I highly recommend you get it. Because you can clean these things right up. See it polishes. You can also clean the pins. They okay. also work great on EMs on the Jones plugs. Yes, the Jones plugs, you're right, Bruce. Actually, the ones that work best is this is eraser. Mm -hmm. I call it the dildo size. But um, this is an SSU1, solid state. Hmm, I wonder what U would stand for. Unit? U Ultra? One. That was the future right there. Complete with built in volume control. Bruce, it's beautiful. And Let's just leave it out of the game. We'll put it on the wall, make a museum. We could. We could start making these in massive. And then we could put them in all the games. What do you think, Bruce? We could You'd have to ask Frank. In every game under the sun. Frank's the master on those things. Yep, not much on that, is there? We just got the speaker. Okay, the power. And the inputs. Now, underneath the play field, it's not a whole lot. We rebuilt the flippers. The nice thing is, the plunger and link, this is the same as a stern, an old stern. So we put brand new plungers and links. We also added the um, brand new end stroke switches. And of course, we changed the cabinet switches. They were almost completely gone. And we tightened up and cleaned up all the other stuff underneath here, too. Um, it came out very nice, Bruce. Mm -hmm. I think it did. And it's still set up to take quarters, too, if our customer would like to do that. But most of the time, they don't want to. It keeps rolling away from me. Let me put this in. There we go. Good. Okay, we're ready for gameplay. But before I start, I wanted to let you know that I did make a video about Star Trip. 31 years ago. The video is right here and showed you all the secrets of the game. It is low def, but we're going to go over some of that video, but you may want to watch that too, especially if you're interested in this game here and some of the features. Now listen, this has a couple of interesting things uh, to score to get it higher in. Let's start it. Okay, now, when you first launch your ball, it can't go, it has to roll through one of these four lanes. Now each one has different features. This one here will give you a thousand. But if you roll through it a second time, you get five thousand and it'll light the extra ball light for your extra ball. If you roll through this one, you get fifty points, a lousy fifty. If you roll through it a second time, you get five hundred and you'll always get five hundred. And then down here, if you go through here, you'll get a free game. Did you hear that knock? Yes, that's right, multiple. Now, <clears throat> your bonus in the center. Up here, look. You have to get these B and C before you get anything. Now, you could get other things out of order, but it won't actually credit you until you get all the pieces. So in other words, B and C will give you two times. Getting these three targets gives you three times. Getting these two targets gives you four times, and these two five times. But unless you can get these first, these second, these third, but you have to do these two, or it'll always be off the dial. You won't get any credit, and I'll show you what I mean. Watch. I get this, and then this, two times. But you see if I do this and this, Nothing. It does not move. I, I get advance bonus. But if I knock these three down, it skipped three and went right to four because it's crediting me for that too. Now each of these targets are worth 5,000. How's that for easy, simple rules, huh? And look, I'm up to five times. And each time I roll through it, baby, I get an amazing thousand points too. It's not that amazing. These are worth a thousand. This is worth a thousand. Now, this is going to perplex some of you if you owned it. Do you see that star rollover? Right there? Do you see it? It gives you no points. You'll hear no sounds. Nothing. And you'll wonder whether or not it's actually working. You're going to say, gosh, I'm hitting it. Nothing happens. If you put it in the test, it registers. You'll sit there and you'll say, 
you change the diode, you do this. Well, you can do everything you want. That never scores a point. The purpose of that, I, this is the first time I've seen anything like this. Watch. If I do that, I get 100 points. The light is not on. Do that all day long, you get a lousy 100 points. But you see, if you do manage to roll up over that rollover, then it'll turn that light on. So, so that accounts for if you hit it lousy and you hit it and it swings and then rolls back down, does it make the shot? It will never turn on the light. Now watch. I'm going to show you so you'll see. You roll up the lane and it'll hit the star rollover. And then a moment later, bang. Now it's worth a thousand points. But that never scores anything. Isn't that odd, Bruce? Mm -hmm. There's not much to it, but the rules are simple but fun. Like me. What did you learn a lot? Too much. My mind is overloaded. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video tonight. Bruce. <laughs> But maybe you need a paper towel for your call. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped that. You didn't drop it, you did it on purpose. Nonsense. A perfectly good roll of paper towels. True. Uh, call them that. Thank you. So mean to me. Anyway. Thank you. For nothing. What? You know he's 56 oh, years old today. That old thing. That old thing. 56? He's like wearing glasses, but I'm not. Because you, you can't see either. I hear the end music. Goodbye. Good night, folks. <laughs>